You are listening to the Arcade Brothers only on the 4 I'd Radio Network, The Fern. Hello, and this is Stephen Mooney. I'm here to talk to you about one of our proud sponsors on the 4i Radio Network. They are called America Joy Print Shop. If you're looking to do business cards, flyers, posters, banners, cut vinyl, car wraps, and more, then definitely check out AmericaJoy.com for more information. And tell them the Fern set you. What'd you say? She was on last night. Yeah, she was on the show last night, and this is now recording, but I don't care. Anyways, hi, welcome to an all new show of Arcade Bros. Okay. I'm your host, Steve O, with my co host, Player Two. It, Toby, you son of a bitch. I'm going to eat your face and shit. What are you doing now? Uh, this is Kyle, by the way. Hi. Hey. And uh, Toby decided to join us on the. Thanks, Toby. On the table in the podcast. Came on the floor. just like, look at me, I'm pretty. Just because you're black, things you can get away with everything. Yeah, so, um, so, anyways, of course, you can, uh, we're brought to you by American Joy Print Shop, official sponsor of the 4i Radio Network, business cards, flyers, posters, banners, vinyl cuts, car wraps, and more. Visit AmericaJoy.com for more information. I'm telling the ferns that you also, starting this month and for the rest of our broadcasting period, we're also brought to you by, uh, Raven. Cruise, uh, dot com Raven Inspirations, I believe it's called. So if you need anything done to fit your needs, such as logos or uh, business cards or anything graphic design-wise, go check out RavenCruise.com to go get more information and check out some of her artwork that she's done. I'll have to actually put the what she wrote out to put in the actual notes. I yeah, forgot to Raven do that. Yeah, Raven Designs is her logo in the corner, and then she has all kinds of like photography and ads she's done, hand-drawn logos. Um, in fact, art. not only with a bunch of contests that we'll be doing for the network, she did give us some free prints, yes. so we will be giving those away So as soon as we reach another number. Plus, also, Kyle and I, we have a couple mm-hmm. of contests contest when we get to um, a certain amount of number of likes again. We got some free cards from uh, GameStop that That's I gave right. away. Plus, also, I have a free download for uh, Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty. So, we'll probably put that up once we get maybe 200 likes, and then we'll do a contest, and then everybody... That, at least, is just a code, so we can give out the code to our lucky winner, and you can get a free Ratchet & Clank game, which uh, Ratchet & Clank are amazing. Uh, amazing. Before we get into everything, Kyle, what are our... We looks like we have a bunch of shout-outs. Yeah, we had... Uh, obviously, we weren't... Uh, we had a show that we released with uh, Sierra and Scustin from the uh, Super Nerdy Best Friends last yes. week. So, we missed out on a lot of, like, uh, first fri- like the FFs that we do on yeah. Fridays. Because of the turkey. Well, it was a holiday, holiday so yeah, we yeah, we basically, like Kyle was saying, we we, we pre-recorded one earlier just so we could take a day off but still give you guys uh, a, a show. So. Episode. so the ones uh, we have were from a combination of that week and this week, so we had quite a bit. Okay. A lot of them all from Twitter, so we have at uh, bhava underscore jim, at jetpack gerbil, gerbil, I guess, jetpack mm-hmm. gerbil, at gaming newark. At y underscore Larcy, uh, at all cool things, at social rug, rug rat phoenix or f p h x rug rats at local torky which is t o u r k e y at crit juice at soleb at rpg underscore org at biomoto at dice master feed at t m c i curd twelve b forty two because I guess forty one was taken. Oh, I thought they were just going with, like, an actual, like, vitamins. Yeah. Like, uh, make sure you get your samples of B-42. At, uh, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, because a lot of these are duplicates. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Very cool. Very Thanks cool. Now, of course, before we jump into the gaming news, uh, we talk about what we've been playing this week. Kyle, it looks like you've just been playing the Elder Scrolls Online. You were telling me earlier... About, uh, they finally, I guess they were taking the feedback after the beta's been out for, what, a good couple of weeks now? Yeah, the beta's been out for, it ended on Sunday, then they had kind of a couple of days here and there where they would just do a quick, like, hey, you want to hombon and help us with this thing? One I had to do was a raid, like, where they actually, like, send me a request saying raids oh, from, like, I thought you said rave, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bring your Argodian ass over here, like, lizard, 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 shake that tail. 
<laughs> oh, he's twerking! He's twerking! He's twerking! He's twerking! <laughs> Indeed! <laughs> Yes, so uh, they had a couple of those. I want that now in the game. <laughs> yeah, if that was in the game, I would have given them more a uh, higher score. But unfortunately, it was not. Uh, a lot of it was just it was really buggy. It ended up having a lot of people like just quitting. Like we were in the middle of it, and then people just started logging off because like this is like uh, it's lagging. It's too much of this, too much of that. So uh, they ended up sending after that week. They ended up sending out a big like, "Hey, thanks for playing. How did we do?" And it was a huge questionnaire. I mean, it was at least over 200 questions. Some of them multiple choice. Some of them giving like a, an area for you to type, and some of them required at least a thousand words for you to like give them a description, or else it wouldn't count. So even if you were like, "Yeah, it was great," like it, they wouldn't accept it. So I had to give them a very in depth uh, critique. And I got to be honest, like if you're fans of MMOs. Uh, there's a MMO coming out in a few weeks. Uh, there's a beta out now, and then there's coming out, I think, a few weeks later called Wildstar Online. That is definitely an MMO you want to check out. Like, look at the site. It's really fun. They're really intuitive. They're really adding a lot of, like, very cartoonish. It kind of reminds me of, like, uh, um, Ratchet and Clank meets, like, an MMO because oh, okay. of, like, how stylized it is. Oh, very cool. It's, uh, you know, it's the guys from, uh, Creature box? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because I was looking into it, thinking like, oh, maybe they did art for it, or maybe they were the guys like concept artists, and they don't have their names on it at all. But it's by NC Soft. It's a game that's an MMO. They're using uh, Carbine Studios, so and they've done some things. They've done like the uh, I think they were the ones who did the I want to say what was that game? The one with the the raccoon. Oh, the um. You mean uh, Sly Cooper? Did they do Sly Cooper? Uh, Sly Carbine? Cooper, I'm trying to remember who was, it was. The first person who did it was called... Oh, Sucker Punch did it originally, oh, okay. who took over for... Um, who then developed uh, Infamous. And then I don't know who took over for Sucko, uh, Sucker Punch, because the newest Sly Cooper game, uh, Thieves in Time, I think was done by a completely different... Um, uh, kind of like the Spyro, where like Spyro left, like and somebody accepted him in Spyro, and then somebody else picked it up. So I don't know who's doing it now. Yeah, and it just shows PlayStation, it just says PlayStation all over. Like it doesn't show. Usually they'll show you like what it's for, and then like yeah. who made it. But it just says Sony. So unless maybe they picked it up, but I don't know what other projects uh, Carbine Studios has done. That. I actually let me find out right now. I'll click on the logo right real quick because I was on the site looking at it. Uh, beautiful artwork, beautiful game. They do also a dev speak, which I was kind of like, God, son of a bitch! Like they took that uh, dev speak as their like uh, blog cast. Oh, okay. They actually show you the game, but it's really intuitive. Like the guy like talks about it, where the guy's like, you know, here we are talking about warriors, and then like he does like he makes all like these noises. He's like, when well, you just want to punch something, and it shows like the character like doing stuff. Like he gets oh, okay. really Very into good. it. But I was just like, dev speak. Yeah. Well, I was like, yeah. well, it looks well, like this is their first game. Like I don't. But see don't feel bad about that, Kyle, because apparently these other guys have on YouTube have stolen socially awkward. So. Uh, and then when I check out the date when they developed theirs, theirs was on May. So May 9th of 2013, so we already had a couple months ahead of them, so we're going to have to email them and Send say them cease and desist. Hey! You assholes. You jerkwads. You so, and, yeah, so and I did do the research before we picked the name. Yeah, we so. wanted to make sure we weren't stealing anybody's thunder, and obviously they, they want some of the god's juice. Or they just didn't do a Google search. We're not just you like, Googling, we're just doing it. But, okay, so... Oh, yeah, so i got to tell you about that too later. It's I was going to tell it on the Indian section, but I got an email from our father about, hey, these guys are looking for an animator. Uh, Can you help these guys out? So I'm like, sure, let me take a look. So I contacted the guy, guy contacted me back like the worst idea for an animation ever that they wanted to do and they wanted it done by January they wanted 14 episodes like me to do all the artwork all this all that and I was like oh so well my rate's 50 bucks an hour you know what are you oh, sorry <laughs> like no we can't afford that we're hoping you just do this for us for like <laughs> Yeah, and I'm free. like, are you kidding me? Like, we got to. Oh, screw that! Yeah. I will. We should do it anyways, but not how they want it. Oh. Just stick figures, and then I'll oh. just be like, I'm John not. <laughs> well, like it's called minorities. Oh they, god! And the thing is, talking about like you know, there's a black guy, there's a Hispanic drug lord, there's like the a Asian, there's the uh, Indian, and I'm reading all the character bios, and I'm reading like, oh, well, we did our research, and we found that there's a niche market for about 10 percent of the population here and 14 percent here. I'm like, yeah, but you do realize that there's a population that you're kind of alienating on this show and you're actually like bashing that 
thing and like all this other stuff and it was the white people like they're really like hating on white people Mm -hmm. and then i kind of want to reply back being like you do realize that i'm white right like you do understand like this is offensive to me just because the way you're like your character interactions are and stuff but i ended up just telling them like yeah you this is a really good project but i don't know if i have the time to really like get this done and to the quality standards that you're wanting but they gave it to me in a word doc and some of their character designs are just like horrible horrible yeah it looks like like Oh, look at me. I'm a black guy. Pretty this much. Yeah, like, such my Like, you, they're talking about, like, brazing the bar of standards of, like, their culture. And then they draw the black guy like you would assume a black guy would look like, you know, with the saggy pants and all. Almost like, that doesn't, like... First off, saggy pants with black people have gone out since 1990. Yeah. Does the show take place in 1990? Because then that was the only way I would give it. It's like, yeah, make sure his pants are on backwards, too. Yeah, exactly. Kid him. You know what? <laughs> Just make him crisscross. Crisscross, make you jump everywhere. But yeah, so back. Why are you yelling at me? He's my normal speaking voice. And this all happened in the raid in Elder Scrolls. Like I'm telling you. Oh wow, this is crazy. (laughs) No, but you're playing with the guys. I got an idea for the show. Animation. I saw your profile. Like he's like critiquing. He's like, you know, animation has suffered a blow since like South Park and like this and this. I'm like, you realize South Park's still in the air. Family Guy's still in the air. American Dad's still in the air. Okay, first off, South Park. It takes them. This is what I love. It takes them six days to get done with one episode. Unlike all the other shows, because South Park has figured out a way. To do it, it with Maya that works perfectly for their show. Especially, have you seen their new opening too? Oh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's fantastic. So I'm like, don't even try to do the fact that uh, um, was a Cleveland show is finally getting canceled. Finally, yeah, after all this, time. after all this time. So it's like, well, not to mention like the the whole con like the whole intro was kind of like yeah like so you're bashing white people you're bashing all the shows that are already out yeah and then I was like when he said like there hasn't been anything new that's really like generated animation I don't know about you but I, there's a little show that came out less than a year ago or so that's oh, called uh, Adventure Time that just completely blew up the, like everywhere yeah Adventure Time yeah. regular show there's also another one uh, that just came out not even a year it's only been maybe three or four months called Axe Cop yeah which is fantastic and, fantastic. and the anima- animation animation and guess what? That one does not belittle any minorities. No. In fact, it makes fun of itself because how everybody talks, like especially because it's written by a five-year-old. So yeah. it's just not like we must kill all the bad guys. Oh, bad guys. But yeah. So anyways, yeah. So that's a whole nother. That's gonna be a. You can hear more about that, and I'll bring the file so you guys can see the work on the idiots uh, section because I got that uh, this coming week. soon. So yeah. I left it very good. I told him like what you did. Yeah. Just a couple animators. I don't recommend like the the UACTs or the schools that have animators. Maybe like in classes right now who are learning it. Yeah. Because that way you don't have to pay them. You can give them credit or like just hey here's a yeah put them on the video. on their credit yeah, yeah for their portfolio and that way you can get the animations that you animators who are actually in the field to do it. Like me, I it's like I could do it but it would take so long to do that Kyle I got an idea for you yeah it's called Inorities Inorities and it's about white people wanting to be black people (laughs) here's the concept part they want to be in the Norties exactly see I think it's going to blow animation off the that it's just a bunch of sick people (laughs) <laughs> but even better, they're white. No, the first white epic people this, on a white paint. This is the this is the best animation. There, it's just the white guy walking across the road for five minutes, and then he just goes, "Damn, <laughs> the end." <laughs> Damn, and we just got an Emmy. So, yeah, um, hey, in Nordies, coming soon. Yeah, so the I Radio Network and Elder Scrolls. I ended up filling out their huge like questionnaire, and it was just like. Yeah, I kind of went into depth about it. I just said, like, there's a lot that they need to improve upon and the aspects of, like, a game design. Like I said, if you're as, and a fan of an MMO, like, Wildstar Online to me is what I'm like, yeah, like, I'm jazzed about it. I really want to, like, do it justice and, like, play that game. Like, that one just makes you want to play it. Where this game, like, it looks pretty. You're, you're sold because of, like, oh, Elder Scrolls. Well, I played Morrowind, or I played this, or I played that. I played all these other games at Bethesda. I'm definitely going to check this out. And then when you check it out, you're, you're very kind of lackluster disappointed because it's like well there's elements of it that are okay or elements of it that are cool but for the majority but it's it like, doesn't re- like you're kind of hoping out. like this well, is literally like, like I a play beta sk- beta i play like skyrim and you're yeah. like oh like i'm not even halfway through skyrim and there's so much you can do it in the details and the animation and then even this guy uh they just re- uh, talked about him on kutaku where he made a uh, morrowind update for it for like the pc because you get the kit oh yeah so he really he literally rebuilt morrowind using the skyrim technology and he made it a free like hey here's a free download for you like the armor and everything like i remember morrowind being like oh yeah this was pretty cool at the time and like now it's like 
you know, with with the technology of Skyrim. Like, so that based on that, I'm like, cool. Like, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be awesome and play with friends and all this other stuff. And it's, it, you know, it's lacking in some areas. So I really wish that they uh, they improve on some of those things that I I gave them a friendly critique about. But I, who knows? Because obviously they're you're like, you guys should stop what you're doing and make the show called In Inority. In- 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 <laughs> <laughs> But how about you, Steve? What have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing a bunch of stuff. Obviously, there's the Super Mario 3D World. I played a lot more of that. I actually have gotten towards the end of the game, but what? it's it doesn't end, which is kind of nice. There's a bunch of bonus stuff. Plus, there's also an extra hidden character. Um, I do not want to. I don't know if I want to spoil it for people. Um, but there is a, another character, a playable character, after you beat the game. You will play, like, two levels on this other world, and after the second level, you unlock this character. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, I finished A Link Between Two Worlds. Phenomenal. Uh, brought back Old School Zelda with a brand new twist of all this cool stuff. There's still a bunch of stuff that I need to collect, though, in the game. But the final boss battle and, like, the twist, actually, at the end with the boss battle was actually really kind of cool. Like... I kind of saw it coming, but I kind of didn't, because they kind of, like, they showed you, like, right off the bat with a lot of stuff, so you're kind of like, okay, is it going to go this way? But then you're like, oh, no, that's a little bit too, like, just, like, throwing it in your face, and then it did happen, so it was kind of like, so it was kind of cool, but I did really enjoy it and everything like that. Plus, after you beat the game, you can play challenge mode, so the enemies are harder, um, and all this kind of good stuff. So, I mean, fantastic, fantastic game by Nintendo, uh, both two games right there. So, especially, uh, we'll get into this, into the gaming news for, uh, we'll talk about some holiday shopping for a lot of people. But then also, I got the Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus, traded in a bunch of stuff. The game wasn't that, uh, expensive. And I was curious why, even though it is a full-blown Ratchet and Clank game back to its roots, only biggest problem it is, it is way too short. It's literally like five planets. Hmm. that you go to um but it's a great storyline i'm just kind of sad because this is supposed to be the last entry in the future saga until whatever they're going to do for the playstation 4 but not really the best one to go out on i feel uh, to me i would have rather you guys kept this one worked on it a little bit more and then just release it for the ps4 uh because you could already didn't so much more because you added two new characters to this two new villains and they were phenomenal it was like a brother and sister and one the brother they're supposed to be like twins <clears throat> And the brother's, like, really huge and massive and everything like that. And then the girl's very skinny, very small, but she has got, like, you know, kind of, like, powers and everything like that. So it was a really cool idea. It was really fun, you know, gameplay and the the new weapons and all the cool kind of stuff you get to open. But it was just, I was like, ah, it's way too short. So, and then I'm probably going to finally get all the trophies in that game. And then it made me go, you know what, i got to go back to Ratchet & Clank or Kraken Time because I literally almost have all the trophies in that game. It was just, like, a screw up where I accidentally started a new game and saved over my old game. And I was... Very pissed about that, oh, so, yeah. but, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so those are the games that I've been playing this week. Also been playing, obviously, if Kyle has not noticed, oh. I was able to finally get a brand new phone. I picked I up what... I just noticed <clears throat> one right now. I picked up what Kyle got was a, uh, Actually, one of the new... Is better. Is yours it? is different. Yeah, that's not what I got. What did you get? I have the Nokia Lumia 925. What do you have? I have the Nokia Lumia 928, I think I guess so. Yours is better. Oh. Three times better. Four times. Oh, I thought yours, ours was exactly the same. Well, uh, it's just a Windows phone, yeah? Well, yeah, it's a Windows phone, which I'm still you trying to... Nice, uh, you have a nicer flash on yours. See, mine's like in the metal here. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. That's right. So whip it out, Steve. Let's compare. Your flash is better than mine. Well, it's and black. And it's black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nef- uh, Netflix. Yeah, Netflix, Netflix is having a deal. Uh, Verizon, I uh, was due for an upgrade, oh, and nice. it was free, so I decided oh, to go ahead. Better. I love yeah. when that happens. So I went ahead and did that because I needed a new phone. After getting it, I realized it's a lot bigger than my iPhone 4. It's a lot lighter than my iPhone 4, even though the iPhone 4 is smaller. The only thing I had to do was figure out I got to get all the apps back that I was using. Uh, oh, right, right. Stuff that. But I did do my Xbox Live, which is fun, and I've been playing a couple of games on that, like Jetpack Joyride, which I've already played. I finally tried out that Six Guns on it, which is really kind of unique for a 3D shooter. Uh, with the game, <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, just a couple of other stuff, there's like Minesweep for it, there's a bunch of just free stuff, so I just download a bunch of free stuff uh, for it now until you can go out and buy stuff, but they did release, I guess, Final Fantasy hmm. for it, uh, the first one, it's kind of like the one that's revamped with the graphics that the PSP did, um, so it is kind of interesting, there's a trial version of that, <clears throat> speaking of uh, trial versions, I do want to talk about this, uh, this is not at the top of the gaming notes, but I do want to talk about uh, 
Naughty Dog. Um, yeah, one, of the co- one of the co-founders of Naughty Dog decided to uh, kind of throw Nintendo under the bus and kind of just bash them, uh, which I thought was kind of weird because Nintendo just released two big titles this holiday season, The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario 3D World. Now, granted, there's a lot of people who are fanboys out there. You can say I'm a huge Nintendo fanboy, but I look at it more like I'm not a huge Nintendo fanboy. I'm like, Nintendo is just a name that I trust because it's the system we grew up with. It's the system that's been there for the longest time. It's kind of like the bar. Like it's, that's yeah, to me, it's to, the it's the bar of standards. Like when OEM like comes out, I always compare it to Nintendo. Like that's always like where yeah, I yeah, that's where well. I compare system series to Nintendo. Now I'm looking at the Nintendo Wii U. Yeah, it didn't sell like it did the Wii. It didn't do this well. Nintendo Wii U was trying to come back and bring old school gamers back to playing video games on the Nintendo. Uh, but then again, they released a bunch of games, but they, one of the co-founders of Naughty Dog decided to say that Nintendo should not be doing consoles anymore. What? They feel that their consoles are not doing the best, but then he turns around and says, but even though the 3DS is outselling the PS Vita, so I'm more like, but then what are we doing wrong with our consoles? Yeah. He feels that the, uh, he feels that Legend of Zelda, Super, uh, Super Mario Brothers, all those systems should just become, uh, basically able to play on all consoles. He basically wants Nintendo to drop out of the system race and become a uh, company like Sega. And that's all well and good, but Sega, the reason why they became that is because their systems failed. Their systems, the last system they released before the Dreamcast, which literally if the Dreamcast came out before the Sega Saturn, Sega would probably still be in business because the Dreamcast was a phenomenal system. Even when they were almost on their way out, they still gave us a kick-ass video game system. It was literally like, uh, I would say, a Neo Geo because it was all arcade-based games. It was That's like literally yeah, having, it was like like, it was like having an arcade in your house. In Japan. <clears throat> but then I go on to read further going, okay, well, what's this guy's beef with Nintendo? You read on further that this co-founder not only left Naughty Dog a while back, but then he became the president of THQ. Kyle, I don't know about you. What happened to THQ? Uh, what's, uh, what's Australia? Down Under? Yeah. Yeah, uh, they went under. Yeah, yeah, they went under. <laughs> uh, so, and then a bunch of gaming companies had to bail them out. Not like bail them out with money, but they literally had to take a bunch of their projects they were working on, such as the Stick of uh, Truth, the South Park game that's been pushed back, um, and a couple of other games that everyone was worried about that THQ got their hands on. THQ to me was one of those. You remember? Uh, what was it LGN? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stupid They're rainbow game yeah. that would get these licenses like Jaws, X Men, and they would make horrible. Like they didn't even bother checking like anything. They didn't read a comic book, even watch the movie Jaws or anything. They were just like, oh, I just want to make money. To me, THQ was probably JLN, which I wouldn't be surprised if JLN actually was going under. And they're like, we just need to bankrupt. We'll make a new company called <laughs> yeah. THQ. Uh, yeah. That to me is the lowest standard of gaming. Is THQ to me? Uh, no offense to certain games that came out, such from them like uh, the Dark Siders games. Those were probably like the last good games that came out from THQ in a long time because the last game I think I played of THQ was Quest 64, which Kyle and I were like, oh, you build up your magic, you build up this, you build up that, yet you defeated the boss with your stick. Yeah, exactly. That was <clears throat> Quest 64 was horrible to me because like, yeah, I tried to build up, build up Earth magic, and I kind of I suspected that there was an issue because like as you used more things, and the problem was you use like a big giant Earth spell, and then you know you're out of mana, so you have to keep using your shillelagh or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then you get to the final like, I'm the darkness of the world, and you're like, oh god, one Earth spell, and I realized it was like immune or something like that. Like he's immune to magic. I'm like, wait, so you mean to tell me that the end boss? That you've been building your magic to defeat all this time is immune to your magic. So then I'm like shillelagh, shillelagh, and then I was like dead, like two hits because it was like nine, nine, nine. Like because my my yeah, must have been like I literally had like an arm that must have been like ripped like the Hulk, <laughs> and then the rest of me was like spellcasters. So yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. So it's like so I'm sorry to uh, sorry the guy from Naughty Dog, and I don't want to even bash on Naughty Dog because Naughty Dog delivers great stuff. games, but I just don't know why this guy. It decided it upon himself to say to like that, which is funny because that's what PlayStation did all last years with uh, the PS3. They kept making fun of Nintendo, and Nintendo was triumphant. I think Sony has done a great job of not saying anything, and their system's doing great this year, the PS4. They haven't said anything, oh, we're going to do this. They haven't made promises. They haven't done any of this kind of stuff, which is good. And even Xbox, as much as Xbox got kind of 
pretty much kicked in the balls at E3, where they came out, said all the stuff, and then PlayStation came out and said, "Yeah, we're not doing that." And they were just like, and they were like, "Ah!" Like even Xbox didn't turn around and be like, "Well, the PlayStation's a piece of crap." Like they, like this has been the first console war I've seen that no one's really been throwing any mud. Yeah, like exactly. no one's really been bashing on anything, which is good because I'm like, don't get me wrong, you're out for a profit, but to me, it's like gamers are going to pick up what they want to pick up, and they're probably going to pick on both anyways if they really want to. If they really want to pick up both titles, systems, yeah. so to me, it's not that big. Of a deal. I just thought that was a very weird story, and then after I read more, and I was like, oh, you were the president of THQ yeah. when it went under. Good for you. So you have no thing. So um, what are some of the things that you? Uh, what is the Xbox One errors and the PS4 errors? Yeah, they were talking about this a lot because when both console releases, obviously, there's a lot of patching that they've had to do. There was a lot of like. Um, Xbox had some really funny ones where literally it's like, please plug in controller. Your controller is not plugged in. And like then it shows like the controller is plugged in. And you're just like, uh. And then like some of the other ones was like, it gives just gives you a frowny face. Like there was a critical error. We don't know what happened. And then it shows like the guy like's finger going for the power button, just like whatever. <laughs> you know, like they try to like sugarcoat the fact that like things aren't working. And I think that unfortunately like a lot of people are okay with like that being the norm. Like you buy a new system, you have to like do patches and things like that to get them working. Mm-hmm. And I understand that there things are work in progress, and there's going to be issues that arise that you just can't test for. Uh-huh. But I kind of do have a problem with it because, like, no, guess I do what? Too. you have a Nintendo right now. Your game doesn't work. What do you do with it? You bring it back to the store, and you get a brand new system. You blow on the cartridge, and you pop. Oh, it you're talking about a regular, like, like, like old school cool. Nintendo. Yes, yes, yes like that's you right. Blue on it, you popped it back in. Done. But. Also look at it this way. Okay, now, I don't know why. I think our Nintendo was cursed back in the day. My, our dad used to... I remember the Christmas, we all... My, they, they would get us each individual game, but then they would buy a family game. Oh, that's right. The for family. all those guys. So the one game that they got for everybody that we were all excited to play was Ghost and Goblins. Yeah. But for some strange reason, and this was not just the, that cartridge or even the rental one, every time yeah. we went to play this game, it did not work. Yeah, it's like, nope. And the weirdest part is, though... You were able to take that game after Christmas. Dad was able to take the game, even though we unpacked it. He was able to take it, bring it back to the store, and get a brand new yeah, one. Yeah, like here you. He are. was able to do that with the with the uh, the Sega Genesis, he the first one. He a whole brand new system and returned it without having to worry about a processing fee or like a. And he was able to. And he was, yeah, restock fee. And he was able just to pick up and whatever uh, the Nintendo at that point because I think we got the original Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive system was the first one we got. We try that shit. And we tried it and we're like, yeah, it's okay. We didn't really get it because all we wanted was the Nintendo at that point. And then Dad was able to take that back in it. Now you can't do it. That was a huge hassle when you go to return a game. Yeah, because it's got a or a serial console. number. Well, not even a serial number, but they're like, if you return an unopened game, the only thing they could do if you have the receipt, they're like, you have to get the same game. Yeah, like, um, I don't want the same game I want. You know, or whatnot, and all this kind of thing. So, yeah, it was so weird. But, yeah, that's a good point. Like, okay, when we bought Nintendo, it worked. When right. we bought Sega Genesis, it worked. Super Nintendo, it worked. N64, it worked. Even PlayStation, Even PlayStation, PlayStation, 2. PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox, the original, and uh, what was the other one? Like Even the Dreamcast. Like, all that kind of stuff. It worked right out of the box. Like, it, this was the final console. This was no updates, no anything, no patches, no all this stuff. And I don't understand, like, if we're going to be throwing down almost, you know, half a thousand dollars for a system. Yeah. Make sure it works. Okay, Nintendo Wii U. I've had it for a year now. I've never had a problem with my Wii. Okay, again, as much as you want to say I'm a Nintendo fan, no. As much as everyone wants to say, no, Nintendo doesn't know how to make Nintendo doesn't that. Nintendo doesn't know how to make consoles. Okay, Nintendo knows how to make consoles because not once has I had any issues with any of my Nintendo consoles. I've never had like when people are like, do you want to? Okay, when people ask me, do you want to buy the extended warranty on your Xbox 360? You know what I say? Yes. Do you want to buy your extended warranty on your PS3? Yes. Do you want to buy your extended warranty on Nintendo Wii U? No. <laughs> because it works. No yeah. matter how much you want to bash a Nintendo product, Nintendo knows how to make a console. Okay? End of story. So, I've never had a problem with the DS, Game Boys, anything like that. But that's a good point. Yeah, if a game screws up in your system in the old style thing, you can pull out the cartridge, blow on it, boom, put it back in. Works perfectly. So, yeah, I'm exactly on board with you with this. It's like if you're making a system and you want us to shell out 400, 500 yeah. bucks, I want it to work. I want it to be like the best system yeah. ever. I, I don't want do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there's going to be an update for that. Oh, there's going to be an update. Yeah. That's like with the Bethesda game. I'm sorry. You work all this time on a game. Make sure it works. Yeah. 
Like I said, the only time there's or ever like that dragon that flies off backwards, like yeah. to be part of the experience. Like, oh wow, they fly backwards. Oh, they fly backwards. <laughs> dragon like, backwards. Like the tra- the tiger thing you show me where they hit the same yeah, the guy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I like my glitches as much as the next is a fun, but sometimes there's glitches like there's glitches that get to the point like there's the fun cougar man in Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Okay, cougar man. Yeah. But it doesn't destroy your game or anything like that. Like the thing I hated was with Sony PlayStation for the Skyrim games because little Bethesda was like, no, nah, we don't care about uh, Sony at this point. You literally walk into this cave to do a quest, and the cave would not load. It yeah. would just be dark. And then you're like, okay. And like, then you have uh, to quickly turn around, exit, and then be like, okay. to your death. <laughs> well, not even that. It was like, you, if you walked any further, you couldn't find your way out. And then yeah. your game screwed. So it's just like, okay, you, you, how long were you working on this game? And, and, and like, you made oh, that, your FM money. That was the best one. Like, someone had the same issue I had where, like, you go into a cave, it doesn't load. So then, like, the one guy saved his game, but then he said what ended up happening was there was a patch that came out that rendered the cave. So then every time he loaded his game, the cave, like, literally, like, landed on him. So then immediately he was just like, every time his game loaded, it was that, oh, like, the character dying over and over again because there was no way of, like, of circumventing him in the cave. Like, it was like it had to go through him kind of thing because of how it was loading and okay. it was just like he just kept dying and yeah but i just I, I like as much as i love video game system and stuff like that but i just hate the fact that like we're kind of you guys are kind of the norm of like meh like, yeah and i don't okay think we should meh. i don't think we should be like that i really think we should be like as much as like these ki- this is what i love these kids these days who think they deserve everything that i'm sorry back in the day we got consoles that worked we had consoles that didn't have any problems and you shelled out a shit ton of money for these consoles and you make took sh- care of them yeah and you took care of them make this fucking shit work okay don't give me because Literally, if your system broke, you bought the thing, especially if you got a PlayStation, you have to sort of return it. They don't have any more. You have to sit on this broken console f- until they get more yeah, in. Yeah, and know. whether they get them in or not, you're not guaranteed to get one, even though you bought yours on launch date. Yeah. I mean, at least with the Xbox now, that's the one thing. Xbox Ones are available. Um, Xbox actually did talk about how they beat Sony out on their Black Friday sales, but then again, Sony has not released a new shipment yet right. of PS4. Well, they, they have, they've been so backlogged with people wanting to get the system that it's taking them forever to catch up. So, uh, basically all I'm saying, if you're gonna make a fucking system... <sighs> Well, I also Make say, sure like, it it's up to the gamers, too. Like, if they came out and said, oh, we want to sell you a new console at $1,000, mm-hmm. like, I think it's about time that some gamers say, you know what, as much as I want to play your next-gen titles, I'm going to wait until it comes down in price and not buy it from you until it's cheap. Because right now, there is... Right now, there is no... Um, if you think about it, there's no holiday bundles for the PS4. Nope. Or the Xbox One. Nope. There's holiday bundles probably for the PS3, Xbox 360, yeah, and the Wii U. Uh, we actually Kyle posted yeah, there was on another one. Just the one for you. Go ahead and talk about Nintendo. I just saw one for uh, PS3. Oh, we can talk about all of them. I figure. But I remember Kyle. He posted on our uh, Facebook page. There's a lot of bundles out for the uh, Nintendo uh, products uh, for the 3DSs, for the Wii U's. Uh, they got a great bundle for kids. Uh, for the Wii U, they got the Skylander bundle, so you get pretty much the sis- the console and the game. I think it's like two ninety nine. Uh, they also have the Legend of Zelda one two ninety nine. You also have the new Super Mario Brothers, which is cool. You get not only new Super Mario Brothers with the system, but you get the Luigi U game that they released a little bit later because it was the year of Luigi this year. Yeah. Um. So you get that. They also have a bunch of of the Nintendo two DSs that they're releasing with uh two two each one. One's coming out with Pokemon X and one's coming out with Pokemon Y. You got the Super Mario Brothers Dream Team uh, 3DS, you got the Zelda 3DS, you got a, a Luigi's Mansion 3DS. So there's a lot of good bundles coming out from Nintendo uh, this year. They also have a Wii, uh, even a Wii bundle that's coming out as well. I think you get like Mario Kart with that. Um, with the, it's a, which is weird. Uh, like again with Nintendo, you're making a smaller Wii, which I I I'm still not like as much as like I said like I love Nintendo. I don't think that's a good move, but. You're going to do what you want to do. Uh, what are some of the bundles, like PlayStation 3-wise? Uh, well, PlayStation 3 obviously has like the Last of Us. You can get a 250-gig system with Last of Us and a few other DLCs for 249 Oh, that's pretty good. Um, they show, And it's a slim model. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also show like an Xbox. You can get like there's the Kinect bundle that they did last year. I think they have a bundle. Don't you get Tomb Raider and Halo 4 with one? That's the one with the 250. They also have just the 4-gig Kinect, and then they also have a 250-gig one with the Kinect. And this is the newer, slimmer, slimmer yeah. version. Uh, with that one, you get the Forza Horizon, Connect Sports, and Connect Adventure, uh, plus the Connect system. 
uh, for I think about the same price as the PlayStation. Let's see here. It is a million dollars. Nope. No, it is. Uh, yeah, same price as the other ones. But if you look at it, they're all under three hundred dollars. Yeah, easily like two forty, three hundred. Like some are a little bit more. Like one was like three fifty, but then you got like an extra controller, extra game. But then again, it's still cheaper than a new. The, uh, you could just bought like a brand no new system game. with no games, one controller, and actually, did I tell you about it requires the all these things? It requires that you have an HDMI yeah, TV. Yeah, HDMI TV. It requires you have internet. Internet. You have cable. Cable, because a lot of features won't even load. Like, yeah, that's true. Cable. Because actually, uh, there was a problem with the PS4. Uh, Sammy, our unofficial intern, was in uh, California, and her buddy got one, and they just wanted to watch a movie. They own the movie. The Let's movie just it. pops it in. And the guy's like, "No, we can't, because it doesn't. It's not connected to the internet." I'm like, "Really? Seriously. You can't watch a movie, even though you. Oh, it's not like you're trying to watch it from Netflix. I can watch a DVD in my 360 just fine. Me too. I can do the same thing with the PlayStation 3 right now. So it's like. Yeah. Again, fix these problems, you guys. But yeah, so if you are curious about your holiday shopping, there are going to be a lot of great deals. I know, um, I think throughout the entire month of December, GameStop is actually doing, if you buy two pre-owned games, you get one free. Exactly, yeah. Uh, which is a good deal. Um, they also have, you know, f- refurbished consoles. Um, I think also if you trade in a console, you get $30 towards any other new console you want to put towards. So yeah, um, there's all that kind of good stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, I found this story on... This is the thing I have with um, right now. This is the problem I have with IGN. Um, I do have a problem with IGN overall because I feel like half the time they give game reviews, I think they're getting paid off. Well, a lot of them are, yeah. A lot of them are like, Halo's the best, cha-ching. Like, why are yeah. you spending money on the... But um, I think a lot of things they do... I'm actually glad you got this actually from uh, Kotaku because I actually yeah. saw the story. I go back and forth. Cause but, few, Kotaku yeah. seems to be more legitimate uh, with their news, but I, I feel IGN... Um, it's very much like part not, of the media uh, aspect. Well, not even work. the media, but the problem is, is it's the holiday season. Nothing's really getting released right now, and they're just trying to scramble to find any gaming news. They yeah. literally posted like the white Xboxes, like they have nothing. Yeah, it's like. Uh, uh, but this yeah. one I thought was weird. Is Lindsay Lohan calls lawyers over a Grand Theft Auto Five thing, which I'm gonna call bullshit on this. Yeah, it was bullshit from the get go. But go ahead, why are you calling bullshit? Uh, because already the, this game has come out. This game has been out for a while, and now she's finally doing. You know why she's not doing it? Because the game has made a shit ton of. Oh, yeah, this has probably been one of the biggest selling video games for a long, long time. Now, the problem I have with this is any she's talking about like, oh, there's these people who took my likeness. Okay, I played the game and I know who she's talking about. She does not look like Lindsay Lohan at all. Her name might relate to Lindsay Lohan as a joke, just so you go right. ha ha ha. But that's it. Like, there's no. If anybody has the right to sue somebody right now, it should be Ellen Page for literally taking <laughs> everything about her and putting it in The Last yeah, of Us. Yeah. Which you know what she did? She said oh, that's great that they ripped off my likeness, but you shouldn't really give me any credit. You should give the voice actress credit for playing her. The only thing she was bummed out about because she literally had a game when she's in coming out like two months yeah, later. Yeah, that was true. her only problem with it. But she didn't go, I'm going to sue Naughty Dog. She didn't say Naughty Dog's a piece of shit. She didn't even bash the company. No, she just said like, oh, she they just used like, my likeness. They used my likeness. Like but she was like, all right, I guess that's okay. But... Nothing. And she has every right, because literally every time you show yeah, that picture like, to somebody, that's like, it's Ellen Page. You can literally put the picture side by side. You're like, it's Ellen fucking... It's like, Ellen. if you guys make a movie of The Last of Us, you better give Ellen Page the part. Yeah. Like, that's her. We gave it to Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, I feel that, yeah, there's the paparazzi mission, which I have played. So, well, then here's the thing. She's not referring to the paparazzi mission. Oh. She's referring to the cover girl who's in the bikini. And that's not even based on her. It's based on another model who gave them permission to use her likeness for that cover art. All right. Uh, she's not uh, even you rapping. I'm going to grab that art right now. And okay. Flip yeah, because it's yeah. that's what she's complaining about. And the art is actually based on a model. Let me pull out her info. Because the model... That's the whole problem. Is like The model who... They're trying to correlate, the, I guess, the art of the box to the sales, which unfortunately is not the case. Um... Yeah, the model is based on a woman named Shelby Willander. Uh, that's who actually modeled for the game cover. And I think that's actually what it is, is that she's trying to sue because she's basing the <laughs> model art as what really lured people to buy the game. Not the fact that you can shoot and kill and murder a whole bunch of people. Okay, I am looking... Okay, I'm going to pull yeah. up a picture of Lindsay Lohan yeah. that I guess she's claiming looks like... And then while you pull up that picture, look at a model called Shelby Willander. She's the one who actually did model for that uh, thing. And she looks, yeah, pretty much like it. Like, she looks more like it than Lindsay Lohan, so. 
Okay, I just looked at the picture. Um, I'm not seeing a likeness. If you want to look at the picture and compare it to the Lindsay Lohan picture. Yeah. And then go ahead and Shelby Willander. Okay, Shelby. Hold on. Because that's who's actually based upon. And just Google her likeness. And you'll actually probably see her in that photo where they, she's in a bikini with her arms crossed. And then they exaggerated her to be like this with it. Because, yeah, that's what it was. And I'll read the statement that Kotaku had. It says, Report on TMZ claims that sh uh, Shining Diamond Lindsay Lohan has called in her lawyers to take legal action over her supposed portrayal in the Grand Theft Auto V. I'll give you a moment to collect yourselves. She's apparently going to demand that Rockstar and Take Two pay her for using her likeness. No word on specific instances, but TMZ believes it's part of the issue is that the game's swimsuit clad cover stars a uh, person based Bullshit. on Rockstar's appearance. Yeah. Even though it is not, the honor goes to Shelby Willander. I am looking at the GTA launch party thing they have. They have her holding up her fingers and the same one with the girls. Their eyes look exactly alike. Their nose look exactly alike. Their lips look exactly alike. The even the contour of her face looks exactly like the drawing of the woman's face. Yeah. I think the only thing that you could say does not look like it is the hair, just because how you would do hair as right. a comic. I'm going to pull up now the bikini model one with her in the bikini and the girl in the bikini as well. They look exactly alike. If you look at any photo of Lindsay Lohan, she does not look like this. Okay, if anyone should be suing, it should be uh, Shelby Willander. <laughs> No, no, there's a okay. Now I just found this. There's a Vice City picture that I just found. And the girl with the black hair. You know who she looks like? She looks like Megan Fox. Oh. But this is from Vice City. So I'm literally I can I'm gonna put I'm gonna find a picture of Megan Fox and I'll post this picture and you guys tell me otherwise. The only other person I could see she almost looks like I would say would be uh, Katy Perry, right, Katy but I don't Perry. think she has the like eyes for it. Like the eyes aren't that big. But those I, I'm gonna find a picture of Katy Perry and Megan Fox and I will put this girl next to it. And you guys tell me if these actually look like this celebrity. Yet they have not turned around Nothing. and said, yeah. Lindsay Lohan, you're just trying to make it. Which is well, stupid because right, when you hear a game has made $2 billion and someone says, well, probably one of her coked out friends is like, that guy looks like you. That she was like, oh, well, that's it. Like, I'm going to sue. Even though you haven't played the game, so you have no clue about any likenesses. <laughs> And then also, yeah, like the cover art is like... Uh, okay, the, they just did this, and this woman isn't even suing. There's the female cop who's arresting that woman. Yeah. She looks like Anna Lucia from Lost. Yeah. And they just put the pic... And they're both dressed the same because she's in the cop outfit. <laughs> she's not suing either. So let's go ahead. Go fuck yourself. Literally. Yeah. And that's stupid and cunt. And that's the beauty of games, though, is a game can say in the very disclaimer anywhere on the booklet, in the game, whatever, like any likeness... Like you see it in shows all the time. Any names or likeness of a person that exists is just for the purpose of the show. It doesn't actually mean we were tending to cause harm or pain to said person. So, I mean, like, it's just that alone. It's like they, they have a disclaimer in there for that very reason. So if you assume, like, they oh, they have a guy named Kyle in the show, you know, like, you can't assume that it's talking about you. Okay, now I just found the uh, girl who I think looks like Car Katy Perry, and I think it was from Grand Theft Auto uh, 4. Oh, okay. And again, yeah, nothing. nothing. Never heard anything about it. So Lindsay Lohan, you're I think that's what bitch. it was. You hear $2 billion and you're like, cha-ching, I want some of that. That's all it is. Yeah, which is stupid because, yeah, the paparazzi girl is the only one that's kind of making fun of Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, but... That's oh god I hate oh, I, I hate people sometimes <laughs> I really do oh yeah that's wonderful yeah, oh, that, oh then the best is John Stewart did a thing yesterday oh yeah he was talking about okay so check this shit out uh, this bank company owns a gambling company the gambling company basically has a lot of loans with other people they basically told the gambling company if you choose to pay these loans back late we'll go ahead and pay you a hundred like. A hundred million dollars. So like, okay. So they went went ahead and were laid on their bills. Well, the big company that owns that that company also owns the other company that they have to pay the late fees to. So it basically, it becomes this big pirating scheme where they tell the lower companies not to pay things on time. They get charged late fees. They pay the late fees, but then they also earn interest on everything. So it's just like it just generates ridiculous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And this is completely legal in like the financial world. And everyone's like, how is this legal? Like you're basically like jeopardizing people's credit yeah. and things like that, but you're making money. And it's like so – and like then it's to the point where it's Johnson's and Johnson's is like – Telling pharmacies to give elderly, disabled, and children pills that they don't need so they can go ahead and boost their revenue of medicine, mm. which is completely legal because no one's, find, no one's finding them guilty for this. 
And then it was funny because then John Stewart was like, not even in Grand Theft Auto can you do that. Like, you can do a lot of bad things in Grand Theft Auto. He goes, but you can't do that. Yeah. And so it's like, there you go. Like, that's, you know, that's the real world versus video games. Well, I would have to say, though, with Grand Theft Auto V, there is a really cool mission that you have to, it takes you a while to do, but you find, like, pretty much a hundred pieces of this, uh, uh, pieces of paper, and it turns out to be a confession. And when you read it, then you take actually the, um, I forget his name. I want to call him Daryl, but I know it's not Daryl. No. Uh, the African American <laughs> gentleman in the game. Uh, sorry, I forgot his name. Matt's probably like, motherfucker! <laughs> Don't know his name! All you digital versions look alike. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, but you f- actually track down this girl's killer, and right. then you kill him. And I was like, that's actually kind of justice right there. You know, like this guy basically was getting away with all this because he was like, uh, his father, it was like a, uh, his father was a huge, you know, like celebrity, you know, kind of figure, so he's able to get away with shit. But, um,. Yeah, it's just weird, but I did like this story you pulled up. So apparently, uh, thirty-eight studios is worth a billion dollars. Franklin was Franklin. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what is this? Are they working on another game? No. Basically, what it was is uh, Kurt Schilling says uh, the the game, the Kingdom of Alamar or whatever, uh, is worth a billion. He goes on this huge rant about like you know if some company just came in and threw bodies at it and like really you could really make an industry out of this game. You could really like grow it and make it something great. Mm -hmm. And it was. Basically, for a way of him trying to sell the game again, to kind of like, yeah, yeah, someone should pick this up because I'm in debt. Like, someone really needs to pick this game up and really make it big. And actually, Cliff Lazinski had a really great quote where he basically said, like, whoa, like, Kurt, you can't just take any game and throw a whole bunch of bodies at it and expect it to be successful. Mm-hmm. It's like, you need to have a, real, a good game, like, at the beginning. Now, I do want to give credit to because I do feel that game is great. Like, imagine, had they stretched that game out over two or three games mm-hmm. with as much content as in there, I felt it would have done really well because, like, you could have literally done the part where, like, you do the first level and maybe the second level and that concludes the game because there's so much you can do. And then maybe you do the second level and third. As so third, if you're saying, fourth. instead of actually making a full-blown a uh, game like they did if they were to actually release it on Xbox Live PlayStation Network as little like parts yeah like, like part one part two episodes, part three yes or they did it as DLCs where like pay like two bucks and you can get the next part and the next part and the next part I think it do and that would actually well. I mean actually would be don't get me wrong like we said this uh, King of Val well I feel Kingdoms of Alamar was uh, they just had so many things going against it just because EA, who decided to distribute the game, uh, give them money, and also they're, they're, to me, that's that would be like, hey, this is basically us with our sponsors. They sign us, and we are supposed to plug sponsors, and we're supposed to do a good job and talk about it and everything like that and get it out there. Uh, EA, I felt, did not do that job with that because they were like, literally, Kingdoms of Valmar would have been a perfect summer game like we talked about, but you literally released the game a week before Mass, Mass Effect, Effect 3, 3. Which was like hyped and hyped and hyped. Which was like a game year. that was the third game in the series concluding the entire game. So people see Kingdoms of Valmar, and you take talking about $60 games, Oh, I've already played Mass Effect. I know what to expect from Mass Effect. I want to finish the story of Mass Effect. I'm going to put my money towards that. Yeah. Why would I waste my money? And on even though like Mass game? Effect's for that ending in that game was like everyone was kind of like man, like, and then they created like, well, there's all yeah, the there's the ultimate that. crap. Everyone still remembers that, as opposed to your game. Like no one still like they just know that you were a failure because you yeah. failed so poorly. Like I was just reading the thing again where basically here's what it says. It's like. Uh, uh, Cliff Rosinski disagrees with Schilling's thought and replied, Kurt, you can't throw just throw a bunch of bodies at it and attempt to make WoW and Skyrim. Because I think that's what it is. Like, Kurt Schilling is looking at it as a money. Like, he's looking at it as like, oh, this could make so much money. It's so good. And I granted, the game is phenomenal. If you haven't played it yet, like, you could probably pick it up now for like $29.99. Yeah, it's a great Check game. Check it out. It's a really in depth. Like, it's going to take you a I, while. I tell people, so if, you, you if you're a fan of Fable, if you're a fan of like the kind of like the Elder Scrolls and stuff like that, um, it's got really cool artwork. Um, like the designs of the characters is fun, and just the gameplay is really fun, and just all the different side missions, all the new cast of characters yeah. they develop for that, you know, the voice game. talents in it. Yeah, the voice amazing. talents in it, uh, especially how you can customize your character to like what you want to do. Tea. Like, to the T, to the T, yeah. Be, like however I want to play, I can customize it all over. Yeah, you can literally put traits in every single attribute. So you don't have to just be like, oh, I'm going to be a rogue, or I'm going to be a warrior. I'm gonna like, be and a they mage. actually prefer that you do mixture because yeah, you find enemies that are like you go to go rogue on them, and they're like, nope, I yeah, can, you know, I can beat you. So you have to kind of mix it up. Like mine was still like a jack of all trades like i had magic warrior and rogue mm-hmm. so like it was just like so universal to like try all the different things yeah i mean it's a great game and i and it's like it's sad to know that they're probably not going to make any more just because it went under but then again it's also like at this point of the game 
Uh, Kirk Schilling, uh, I know you listen to us all the time. Uh, you call me daily going, why does one like my game? And you cry. Yeah, and, and it's I funny because a lot of people even say, like, a lot of the comments are like, you know, I love this game. Or people are like, oh, this game was great. Or, oh, but, but it's just but like. But to me, it's like, look, it's over. It's done. No one's going to be buying your company. No one's going to probably even touch it. I guarantee it, it. Maybe, maybe if you're lucky, five years from now, someone will be like, you know what? I want to go and make another uh, Kingdoms of Alamar. But right now, with you kind of kind of bitching and kind well, of pleading that's kind of what you need to said. stop it's kind of like that overconfidence of like look at me look at me look what we did like it's worth money and obviously because you're looking at it like that like I- i'm in making games right now because i want to make games mm-hmm. i want to do something like i don't want to have to go work for a studio for 10 12 years and then produ- maybe get a team together to produce a game mm-hmm. that might do well. Yeah. I just want to get stuff out there. So for me, like it's not about like, oh, I'm gonna ju- I'm gonna sell the game for a million dollars a piece, and you're gonna yeah. buy it. Like to me, I just want to make games, and that's what it sh- their mistake was. Is they started off like we just want to make games, and like it sounded cool. You had Todd McFarlane, yeah, had Ari Salvatore, you had all these people who are like, yeah, let's make games, and you did a really good job. You really made some kick-ass uh, product. But now you're looking at it as like, oh, like, uh, what was it? Uh, their other game that they were working on. They were working on MMO, uh, Cop- Copenhagen or something yeah. like that. Uh, and sh- same thing. It's like Copernicus. That's what it was. Uh, I like Copenhagen better. Yeah, Copenhagen. I'm Copenhagen. <laughs> and I'm here to solve mysteries <laughs> using my magic. <laughs> no, even better. It's a normal guy in a magic realm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, like, what the hell's going on? Oh, here? my God. I think we just came up with a new hit Perfect. TV show. Copenhagen. Copenhagen, Copenhagen the mystical world. <laughs> How the hell did I get here? Well, hello there. Yeah. There seems to be a matter. Indeed. Let's get to room. This is my partner. Yes. Indeed. God damn it. Son of a bitch. I need a gin and a gun. We have we have sticks <laughs> yeah. and, and berry juice. <laughs> Yeah, like it's gonna be a long day this <laughs> summer. <laughs> yeah, this summer. David Duchovny as oh yeah. <laughs> oh oh shit yes <laughs> David Duchovny oh dude okay we're, we're selling this now <laughs> I didn't even think of that in Mortys in Normandies or whatever in you got Norm- the <laughs> you got Normandies and uh, <laughs> Copenhagen in the <laughs> mystical realms. <laughs> Take that, Kurt Schilling. We're going to make buttloads. Yeah, we're going to make... If people just threw millions and billions of dollars at us... Throw bodies at us. Throw it's bodies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, then we get... Uh, what's his name? The comedian who's in... Um, he's in Parks and Rec. Um, oh, the Indian guy. What's his name? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aziz Azar. Yeah, Aziz Azar. We get him to play the wizard guy with him. Oh, that'd be so good. Him but what do you mean? Uh we already got it. Oh, man. 2015, get ready. I'm telling you, man. That'd be so good. But yeah, so basically, oh that's the problem, is when you're looking at it as a moneymaker, yeah, it yeah. fails. And like they said, like the team was good. What I love, here's what I love most about it. They go under, he's like in debt, he's tr- like, and I feel bad for him because he is selling like some personal effects. Yeah, no, I understand. Like, that, like trying to like pay off the debts. But then at the same token, though, like Bungie like picked up people. Uh, New Line Studios, like they picked up people. Like, Naughty Dog picked Naughty up people. Naughty Dog was like, we're hiring. Like, yeah, come on board. Like uh, that's what like, I that's all about I liked it. about the gaming community. Yeah, there was a whole like kind of thing. So um, they were able to pick up a bunch of people because they obviously saw you know their work and what they could do and all this great stuff. Like again, like we said, it's a great game. But Kirk Schilling at this point, like I did feel bad for you at first, but now it's like it's been like almost what two years. Two years. Well, here's a prime example. Joe Matarera made uh, Darksiders one and two. Mm-hmm. Their company went under after Darksiders 2, which was a phenomenal hit. Like, that sold quite a bit. It made yeah, a yeah, no. And their company went under because of the whole uh, debacle with, like, THQ and all those other properties. Like, they were part of that, and they cut the highs. And, you know, I've heard him kind of be like, yeah, it sucks, but he goes, but it's there. Like, but didn't like, someone pick up. it up now because he, got, they basically, did, he yeah. did say, like, look, I'm only going to be making three games in the series. I just want to finish off my story. And people are like, well, it was a good game. It could make us money. Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, so. I think someone bought the rights to Vigil, which yeah. is the company he started with the, the other guys. And then, um, but then again, I haven't heard him pissing a moment about it. Yeah, there's certain like people. Fame. There's like, certain people who know it. how to handle their shit. And, and that is a that. fun game. If you haven't played Dark Siders two yet, I got to give it to you. Yeah, I got to try. Well, I still got to finish the first one. I mean, it's just one of those games when you sit and like how you were with uh, Gears of or, uh, God of War on the PlayStation yeah. three, where you're just like, holy shit, like how like in death and everything. Like that's how this is, where you're just like, oh my plus god. Plus, the, like, the game is also the plus. I know Dark Siders two sold a lot more copies because they actually released it on the Wii U because yeah, the yeah. Wii was finally able to get mature 
games again. Yeah, which was nice that they actually released it for all titles. And then what was really sweet about it is like the marketing that they did on it. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, they really like pushed it. Where like I felt Darksiders, they really didn't as much. Well, I don't think, I didn't know. Yeah, it was more like word of mouth because I remember hearing Darksiders from you. Yeah. And then finally the game came out and then it was really under high, but it did still pretty well, you know. But then again, that's THQ for you where they decide, hey, we're going to make a game and not do the press that we need to do for it. Anyways, here's a new Quest 64. Nah. Two. Wait, what do you mean the 64 has been dead for like <laughs> Copenhagen <laughs> amount of years? Copenhagen. This I'll summer. I'll tell you, that's going to make it. It's going to be great. David Duchovny. Copenhagen. As he is our. I'm trying to think of who else we can get. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. What we need is we need a, uh, a town like uh, mayor who's almost like kind of like a police chief. Like an old police chief, like retired. Like maybe he was a warrior, but now he's retired and became a mayor of a city. Not a mayor of a city. It would have to be like kind of like the what are they called? Like a royal guard of the town. Yeah, I don't know captain something. Weird. Or something Cap- yeah, yeah, captain, captain. Yeah, captain. You have to be captain of a town. He's yeah, like, you're still. I want your badge. I want that. I, yeah. I don't have. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh David. Oh David. David. Uh, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Oh yeah, yeah. I want your badge. I want your arm. I want your blue energy. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'm too old for this. Turn in your pixie dust yeah. and your wizard staff. I'm too old for this. Uh, I'm too old for this dragon snap. <laughs> yeah, dragon snap. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We, we got you, children in the room. You, oh, you, you go dragon snap yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Cosby has the jester. You see, you got the big old pudding and the pops. Zip zap, boobity bop. Wow, Rudy. And at the season finale, it'd be like, so where are you from? Copenhagen. And that's like, that's like yeah. the tie-in, is that it's just where you grew up. Yeah. <laughs> it's not I used to remember doing this back in my old town. It. Your old town of what? Copenhagen. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he goes yeah. to say a dragon comes dragon down, or like fire. trolls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Looks like something ridiculous. Looks like we got ourselves a mess on our hands. Move over once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. Copenhagen's Copenhagen. coming. <laughs> Coming again in a magical world of things has been renewed for 4,000 seasons. Yeah. All the people who died from Walking Dead are on the show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Excellent. I think that's it. We'll just keep going on this one. Yeah, we're done. Okay, Arcade Bros, we made it to 60 episodes. We're done. We're right. done. We're now working on Copenhagen. Yeah. Hashtag, if you guys want... Uh, uh, seriously, no, no. If you guys want us to work on something with Copenhagen, like, like hashtag, hashtag it, Copenhagen. let us know, and we'll definitely do it. After hashtag this episode. Copenhagen, and we'll get it made. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, I'll post a link because there was one other thing. It's that you know that thing we showed last time with Blanca, how he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So they do one with Zangief. Zangief now. Oh, yeah. It's great because it's all about like drinking people who are drunk, and like he comes in like, oh yeah, and like it's people. I'll play a little bit of that, and then uh, then we'll go to oh, our. Uh, we have a lot for next week, though. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, we actually went over a lot with this show so I well, think I we mean, did a pretty come good come on we came up with In Minorities and Copenhagen so but yeah this is pretty cool it's by the guys called uh, Street Troller you can find him on uh <laughs> 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 I love how they do it because they put like the uh, shadow in and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, we'll definitely post that. Uh, I love the Blanca one, so. Yeah, and they do a whole bunch. Like, yeah, they have a Chun Li is jealous, it looks like, too. They have so. a whole bunch. Yeah, they did Chun Li. They did one with Felicia with dogs. 
where she like pops out and then the dog gets spooked so they like put her in there they do a whole bunch of other ones so but uh yeah so we'll happily have a bunch of more shows until uh we wrap it up for uh, for this year but we got a bunch of stuff to talk about especially if there's any more gaming uh like consoles christmas we'll definitely do like a we'll do a wish list like we'll talk about like uh like if you people want to buy some stuff they're not sure what games we'll recommend some but uh kyle where can they find you uh you can find me at mooney studios and of course uh, here at the arcade bros facebook or twitter which is our Arcade underscore bros. How about you, Steve? Where can we uh, you can also visit us online at arcade-bros.com, <laughs> and you can also find us uh, a part of the Fern Network. Also, you can uh, find me at Stephen Mooney Jr. on the Twitter. Don't forget to check out our gamer tags as well as also on the website. And until next time, kiddos, keep on gaming. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Indeed! 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 Magical butterfruit. Magical butterfruit. Don't give me none of your dragon snot. This has been another proud production of the 4i Radio Network. For more great shows, check out www.4iradio.com. I'm sick and tired of you. You give me your wand, the jumbo juice. Your Billy Joes, your John Dewitts, your flickety floppities, your damn fairy pixies, and don't make me get over there with your damn dragon snaps. Indeed. You see, Rudy. Oh.